today I'm going to be talking about Arbliss dollhouses and their history. It's unclear whether or not the company was founded in 1830 or 1831, but history, history shows that Rufus Bliss, the owner, was a motivated and creative young man who would take choice pieces of hickory to a local lathe owner and he would turn his own wood screws during the off hours. And after crafting a good amount, he would hit the road in his horse and carriage and head out towards Boston, selling his much sought after wooden screws. It was during these long trips that Rufus learned all about woodworking. By 1945, Rufus joined forces with two of his cousins and they started to produce um, wooden handles and bench screws, tool handles and croquet sets. In 1873, the city directory of Pawtucket described the company as wooden hand and bench screw manufacturers. By 1890, the company had started to produce children's toys. They soon became famous for the bright colored toys that they produced that were covered in lithograph paper. From 1915 until 1918, the Bliss Manufacturing Company was listed as a wood screw and wooden specialty company. Um, the first mention of the R. Bliss toy line was actually in 1871 in the New England Business Directory. The toy line was inclu included buildings, trains, and, sh and ships. Look how beautiful these trains were. The lithograph paper on them was just, like, amazing. Dollhouses didn't actually appear until 1889 in their catalogs. The dollhouse in appearance seemed to mimic the German-built houses made by Gottschalk. So in 1914, Arbliss sold the rights to build the dollhouses to Mason and Parker, and evidence shows that Mason and Parker never used the Arbliss name on any future products once they took over. In the early 1800s, dollhouses or cabinet houses, as they were frequently called, were status symbols of the rich and elite. Miniature items were collected mainly by wealthy women and were shown to guests basically as a status symbol. Um, and with the Industrial Revolution in the mid-1800s, factories emerged worldwide, which made it easier for the middle-class families to afford more luxuries. The large, elaborate dollhouses or cabinet houses of the past still very much existed, but a new craze emerged for dollhouses as children's toys. Our Bliss, with his staff of 300 plus employees, were able to mass produce houses because of lithography. That was the answer, not having to painstakingly have to paint each house by hand. L lithography was not new as it was first discovered in 1798 by a German born inventor. Um, but it wasn't until the mid-1800s that it became advanced enough to be able to produce a vast range of bright colors and at an affordable price, which made the manufacturing choice a priority. Lithography um, printed and placed on top of simple wood frames showcased the dollhouses to the delight of many small children. Most of the houses were between 10 to 14 inches tall, but some of the larger Bliss houses measured up to 26 inches. A wide variety of houses were produced, most favoring the Victorian or Queen Anne design, but they also produced cabins, churches, fire hall houses, and horse stables and cabins. A variety of our Bliss dollhouse furniture was also produced, but during these early days, the scale was completely different from the houses. So the furniture was much bigger than the houses and didn't actually fit, which is pretty curious. Today, many museums have our Bliss dollhouses on display and they're sought after collector's item by many miniature enthusiasts. No history of the dollhouse book has ever been produced without mention of the Arbliss Manufacturing Company. There's been more than one book with a photo of an Arbliss dollhouse on the cover. My f personal favorite is the Keyhole House, which I think represents 
everything that's wonderful about the Arbliss Manufacturing Company. Here we are, over 140 years later, still marveling over the splendor of these lovely toys. For those of us that can't afford a genuine Arbliss dollhouse, there's a company in the United States called Jean Norquist. Norquist produces and replicates um, absolutely delightful, reasonably priced items. So they're just beautiful replicas of the Arbliss houses. Here's an example of their keyhole house. I'd like to mention that I am absolutely not sponsored by Norquest, but if they'd like to send me a replica keyhole house, I'll do a build video and review. <laughs> and to all the future owners of these treasures, keep them as original as possible. Look after them as they still and always will be a cherished part of dollhouse history. Thank you for watching today's video. Please subscribe and hit that like button and please send comments. Tell your friends.